Interrupt types used by the UART. Byte length, okay. Uh, I don't think we care about the interrupt types, so we'll just consume that and throw it in the trash. Uh, don't give a fuck, dude. Don't give a fuck about the interrupt types, because we're going to disable interrupts anyways. Um, IRQ. Don't give a fuck. Global system interrupt. Don't give a fuck. And that's the vector. All right, now we have the shit we care about. Okay. We don't care about the terminal protocol. We don't care about the language. I think we care about the baud rate, parity, and stop bits. I guess literally one stop bit and <laughs> no parity. We, we literally can't do anything else here. Uh, flow control, we can set these. We can parse these out. Um, X on X off software control. RTS CTS hardware flow control. DCD required for transmit. I mean, I guess we don't care about flow control either because we're just not going to use it. Um, DLab, BOD, yeah, no parity, one stop bit. Um, I think all we really care about are maybe these. We just want to make sure this is zero, this is one, and then this is some sane value. So I think we'll just parse those out. Uh, let baud rate is equal to match slice consume u8 map error E? Zero, just say zero is as is. Three is 9,600. Four is 19,200. Six is 57,600. Seven is one on five two hundred. Everything else is unreachable. Print baud rate this baud rate bank. Okay, reset. Oh, rip. Okay, so this one will fail because there's no serial. I mean, there is serial, but. Actually, is there on that? No, there isn't. There's no table. Uh, baud rate zero. Okay, so this is as is. So basically, don't reconfigure the baud rate. Um, where did you learn systems programming? I just kind of learned it by, by doing it. I don't know. I didn't really have many references other than like the Intel manual and then just thinking it through. 
Um. Okay, zero, 9,600, 9,200, 30 bits and stop bits. The baud rates. Serial needs to go into its own module or library as well. But, um, I guess it's like undefined, don't change as is. Uh, do not change the baud rates. Okay. Uh, and we just have all these baud rates here. I'm going to reference this. Uh, 9,600, 9,200, 37, uh, 57, 600, 1 on 5, 200, okay, and this is Odd rates for the serial device. Do not change the baud rates. 9600, 9200, 56600, or 57600, 115200. Okay. Baud rates as is. Baud rates. Uh, baud 9600. Okay. Um... The uh, SPCR did not specify zero parity bits. All other values are res reserved. Did not specify one stop bits. All other values are reserved. Invalid stop bits. Okay. If parity is not equal to zero, return error. Um, uh, but. Okay, splits. On baud rates, the SPSR or SPCR uh, used a reserved baud rate. Indicate in, indicated specified. 
All right, if parity bits is not equal to zero, return error, error, invalid parity bits. If stop bits is not equal to zero, return invalid stop bits. Okay, um, if it's not equal to one. Um, Currently, SPCR spec only allows for zero, uh, for no parity and one stop bits. Parity bits is not zero, invalid parity bits. If stop bits is not one, invalid stop bits. Okay. Okay, let's try it. That's looking real good. So we know that it's uh, eight and eight and one. And then the baud rate we parse out. Uh, so baud rate, it should be complaining that it's unused. Perfect. Baud rate to use for the um, serial ports. Boom. Okay, we can add debug to baud rate, no problem. Derive debug. Boom. Okay, that's looking great. Panic, assert, unwrap, accept. Panic, assert, expect, unwrap. Uh, these we know will always succeed. And then these ones are test code. And then these ones are the top level of the error stack, so we have to actually do an expect there. We have no way of returning at that stage. So that all looks really good. So now we're returning out all of the information about the devices, all the things we parsed out from ACPI, which is really good. Um, yeah, uh, okay. So. We parse more SPCR information. So now let's get the serial driver. So that's another task done. So now we want to actually get the serial driver working a little bit better. Uh, we'll pass in a baud rate. Um, and that is baud rate. Okay. This is the baud rate to configure the device at. All right, so match baud rate. Baud rate. Um, as is, do nothing. Um, do I have to do curly boys here? I think I do. Do nothing. Baud rates, uh, baud one on five, 200. I guess. Hmm. Enable DLab. Divisor, and you're dividing down from 115 to 100, I think. Um, yeah, because that's the low byte. None. Let divisor is equal to this. Uh, convert the baud rate into the divisor. None sum. We're going to go high low. 57, 600. 
sum zero two baud rate baud 19200 sum 19200 that's a six baud rate right okay and then the next one is 9600 which is uh i guess that's 12 yeah baud 9600 sum zero 12. If let sum high low is equal to divisor enable the DLab. Okay, and then you write in the low byte divisor and the high byte divisor. So we have the low and the high. Okay. Bink, bink, bink. One on five two hundred divided by one is one on five two hundred divided by two is fifty seven six hundred divided by six is nineteen two hundred and divided by twelve is ninety six hundred. Okay. So this is uh, program the baud rate for the device. So, uh, disable all interrupts. Convert the baud rate into a divisor. Uh, latch the DLab. Send the low byte, send the high byte. Um, then here, eight and one. So we know it's no parity, we know it's one stop bit, we know it's eight bits, and then we can set RTS and DSR. Uh, create the device, drain all the bytes. Okay. Good, uh, good. Uh. Okay. So now what we want to do is Um, now that we have the ACPI information, honestly, I could do that right here. I could do this on the SPSR at this phase. If let sum. SPCR is this, so this is parse the SPCR. Um, if it's a 16550, otherwise, um, we only support the 16550 right now. So then we can do uh, ret.spcr is equal to SP, um, some SPCR, else return error error unsupported serial device spcr interface type uh we do not know how to support this serial device i mean do i just pass that into serial yeah we do um it's better Ret dot SPCR is sum this I don't want to pass in the SPCR into serial because this is gonna go into a library. So we could move the SPCR into serial interface. Yeah, we're gonna do that.
Okay. We got that code saved. Now we're going to initialize the serial device. Um... Here we can do SPCR dot um, ACPI dot SPCR dot expect. Uh, ACPI did not have an SPCR, could not identify um, serial ports. Okay. Pub, pub. Um. Perfect. Okay. So then here, I guess we're going to move the SPCR. It's a bit advanced. This is actually okay. Oops. Oh, we don't have consume in these sorts of things. Bam. Baud rate. Okay, we just pass all of these things into serial. Uh, I think it's fine to put the devices into here. Okay. Good. Okay. Now Um, type of serial interface to use for this device. Um, a basic serial driver, 16550. A serial port driver. I don't see an app for that. You'll need one. Come on, Siri. Don't do this to me. Um, interface, uh, interface, if, serial, if, interface, serial 16550, is it, Um, okay, mute. All of our X6 64 machines. It seems that the access size for IO port base 16550 is set to undefined. If it's a 16550 and it's an IO based gas and it's an undefined access size, then set the access size to bytes. 
And then we can say, uh, we don't know how to support this. Error unsupported device interface. We don't have an error type, do we? We use gas results. Um. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Um. Pub type. Same shit we do kind of in ACPI. Uh, pub enum error. These are uh, serial device errors. Um, unsupported device interface. Uh, the um interface is not a supported uh, serial device for this driver. Can't from a gas error. Okay. Bam. Bam. Okay, um, gas error. This error. The, um, accessing the device via the, uh, Gas returned an error. Impl from gas error for error. Fn from val self self gas error val. One sixty nine access size, we can get that from gas. Okay, I uh, just want some more arguments. Uh, and we don't need an access size on gas anymore. Yes. Okay. If let sum. Eh. SPCR is acpi.spcr.take. Expect. I don't want to take that. Uh, if let sum. SPCR is equal to acpi.spcr. SPCR dot interface type SPCR dot address SPCR dot baud rate uh, failed to initialize the serial device else panic. I could do an and then, or like dot, um, I don't want to and then, do I? I don't think so. Um, 
We're looking at the results. If I do a map, no. Failed to initialize serial device. Yeah, because these are different error types for these. Surprised the candle lasted this long. It's it's a it's a good it's a good candle. It's doing great. Okay, um ACPI did not report an SPCR, cannot initialize serial device. Okay, initialize uh, serial. Private field, baud rate. Okay, drive debug, and that should be it. Just kidding, JK, JK lol. SPCR is not private. What? Pub. Oh, SPCR itself is private. MADT is also private. Fixed. So this should fail because I won't find a serial device. Whoa. Okay. ACPI did not report an SPCR, cannot initialize serial device, and that's a panic, and that's fatal. Over. Dunzo. This one, good. This one actually just booted just fine. File downloaded successfully. Range. Nice. Nice. And this was able to initialize that device. Okay. And then we'll clean this code up in a bit. Now we have to figure out what we want to do about this global. So currently we store a gas in serial. Initialize the serial ports at one and five, two hundred and one. And then I set the serial device global. That's unsafe. This must be called in a single threaded environment and then we can use that global. 
Yeah, this is going to the library now. Shared cargo new lib uh, serial. Move bootloader source serial to shared source serial source lib. Okay. So now this should hopefully fail to build. Good. We have no mod serial anymore. Uh, source. Why am I typing eight? That's not what I want. That's the line of code. Uh, bootloader. Oh, cargo toml in the bootloader. Generic access structure with serial. Okay. Shared serial source lib. Uh, no standard. Okay. Uh, shared serial cargo toml has a dependency on this. I can't believe that was in my clipboard. <laughs> I literally just YOLO'd that from my clipboard and it was in there. Um, this one is dot dot. Okay, ACPI is a serial. Perfect. Uh, bootloader or bootloader source print serial is now at serial serial device. We're gonna make that non pub. Because it's a static mute, hidden, good. Uh, pub fn serial device, option ref serial, uh, static. Get a reference to the serial device. Serial device dot as ref. It's gonna be on save. Okay, and then here we can just say, if let some serial is equal to serial device, use serial, serial device. Oh baby. Okay, um, now, init, okay, safety, uh, this function initializes a serial device as if it is an interface with uh, accessible uh, register space uh, at device. Um, if these uh, are not compatible or invalid, uh, undefined behavior will occur. Um, this function must be called in a single threaded environment as it initializes, uh, a, as it initializes a global without, um, Initializes a mutable global without mutable static uh, without locks. Must be called in a single thread in environments. Um, this is not a huge restriction as this will, uh, as this should be called very early in boot before more cores are brought up.
Okay, memory map, not using image handle, exit boot services not being used, and then read and write to fizzmem are not being used. If chain can be rewritten as a match. <sighs> yes. How do you even write that? Like, I feel like using compare is just kind of annoying. Oh, I see. It wants me to use uh, dot compare on this. Right? God, I haven't done a compare in a hot minute. Because then I need to pull an ordering, don't I? Um, greater. Less. If else looks simpler, I kind of agree. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Clippy. Image handle, exit boot services, fizzmem, read and write aren't being used, really? That's true. They are not. They are not. We just read on a line right now. Oh my god, chat. Oh my god, chat. No warnings, no errors, just a perfect development environment. Okay, we don't use any prints. Here's the, we only print in here. So I'll exit the boot services for us. Um, I think this is unsafe. This, um...
If we get to this stage, we know that the serial driver has been initialized. And thus, what we can do... Um, I mean, we don't have a lock on the system table. If I system table register on save static use for output string I think we got to say these are unsafe as well. Because we don't have a lock on the system table. So, it's not success. Mag memory, thank you so much for three months in advance of sub. Hell yeah, glad you're enjoying the content. Fuck yeah. Oh man. Um I think all of these are unsafe. How many statics do we have? Serial device and EFI system table. Okay, unsafe, safety, um, this uses the uh, EFI system table uh, global, which um, potentially, which um, must be used only in a single threaded context. The um, the system table could be uh, I mean, honestly, I could. <sighs> I could say that get memory map has to be called single threaded. And if it is, then it will wipe out the system table. I th it's a little loosey goosey, but, um, Uh, this, uh, function, uh, disables use of, oh yeah, get the memory map from the system use, uh, for the system from Eufy and exit boot services. Uh, this function disables use of... Uh, Yuffie boot services, which terminates our ability 
to use the uh, EFI system table. Um, technically, there are some things in the EFI system table we can still use, but we're just going to say that. Thus, uh, this function must be called in a single threaded context as um, if other function if other threads are executing they could potentially be using the um, EFI system table when it is disabled okay so then this is unsafe and calling this is unsafe uh, I could also do an exit boot services but I kind of like doing both in one um, and exit boot services. It's really verbose, but fuck it. Okay, get memory map and exit boot services. Gets the memory map from this, uh, for the system from Eufy and exit, and exit boot services. This function disables the use of Eufy boot services, which terminates our ability to use the Eufy uh, if I system table. Thus, this function must be called in a single threaded context as uh, if other threads are executing, they could potentially be using the EFI system table when it is um, uh, deleted. Okay, and then that is the end of EFI. Um, and we have some we have some safeguards in place where we do write over the system table with null, and anywhere that we use the system table. Um, we basically check if it's null, and if it is null, then we say that uh, EFI is not registered. Thus, basically the, the only edge case here is somehow if another thread is running, and if that thread is running, and we exit boot services, that other thread could potentially be accessing that structure while it's still, while it got deleted. Uh, but in a single-threaded context, we destroy the system table, and there is no way that ever again we can end up using the EFI boot services, and we'll correctly get error codes from anything that tries to. So, um, I think that's pretty good. And then unnecessary unsafe block at 217. Yeah, because this is now fine. Because this whole function's unsafe. Okay, that looks great. So we're gonna reboot that. Um, we're gonna comment this in. This is gonna let us see what it looks like in ARM uh, Kimu. This is, yeah, could not find valid serial device to use. So this, in this situation, ooh, um, That's coming from ACPI? No. Nine ten. Uh, mount that copy. Mount mount. Target, Eric64, release bootloader.efi. That's not what it's booting from, now. It is booting from fuzzos.efi. It's running the old version. There we go. Phil to initialize the serial device. The reason, unsupported device, arm PL 11 uh, and that basically is happening here. So we go to initialize that serial device. It fails, and it says unsupported device. It's an ARM PL-011, which, yep, we don't support. Uh, and then this one is fine. Everything's good here. Sweet. So then at this point, we have... Yeah, basically we don't support running on... We only support on devices with uh, 16550, which is... Every physical device that I own, including this ARM dev board that's right here, 
Um, everything that I own literally has that. So we basically can't test in Kimu, but we correctly detect that this has an unsupported device. And then when we run this on x86, uh, it fills with a different reason, and that's because x86 Kimu's EFI doesn't give a, um, oops. Uh, x86 Kimu does not have a SPCR. Yep, ACPI did not report an SPCR, cannot initialize serial device. And that basically means that the ACPI did not tell us that there's a serial device on the system or what serial device to use, and thus we don't know what to do. Okay, so we jump into here, we register the EFI system table, we initialize ACPI, which gets information about the processors on the system, as well as the serial devices on the system, or serial device to use. If there's a serial device, then we initialize it. And if there was not a serial device, um, then we get mad at this. And we're gonna say as ref expect, we're gonna do this. Let SPCR is equal to this. Delete, paste. Okay, now we can initialize the serial device and we'll actually even pull it in scope. Bam. Okay, uh, use serial, serial. SPCR, um, yeah, we can implement copy on these. Gas, baud rate, and interface. Um, we should be able to do clone and copy for those. Okay, oh my god. The <laughs> fucking woodpecker. Going ham. Um, e. So, baud rate and interface. Those ones are really light. Um, serial source. Uh, clone and copy. Clone and copy. Boom. Okay, so this is testing it on ARM, testing it on the ARM physical board. Risk five support when? There's already Risk five support. We just have to build it for Risk five. <laughs> it would literally just work. God, God, the fucking woodpecker, dude. Oh. Okay, good. Um, these ones haven't rebooted. Oh yeah, because we exit. I rebooted both both of these machines by force. Uh, we should see main RS 69.5 for all of these. Well, this one is going to fail to initialize serial device on that, and that's fine. And then this is the uh, x86 variant. I guess it's running the ARM variant too. Uh, yep, did not report an SBCR, uh, cannot initialize serial device. Fantastic. Nice. So we basically have all our error modes. Uh, that hasn't booted yet. Write some code to get rid of the woodpecker. Yeah, it's fucking annoying, dude. It wakes me up so much. It's so fucking loud. Like, I don't know what its goal is. It, it's, you're not gonna get anything out of pecking metal. <laughs> like, what's your fucking goal? Oh my god, dude. Loudest woodpecker I've heard. Yeah, I mean, it's pecking the top of my fucking chimney, which is literally metal. Like, what, it, what does it get? Like, what fucking endorphins? Endorphins? <laughs> what it, what is it getting out of it? Like, imagine how strong that nest will be when it gets through. Literally called Woodpecker Pex Metal. Yeah. Anyways, um, 
Bro, your YouTube channel should be a learning platform on its own. Your chocolate milk and fuss OS uh, project inspired me to do something similar for malware for a malware OS, and I'm really excited about that. That's fucking awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um. Could you explain how an OS displays all its w Fuck off! Problem solved. Okay. Um. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this scream up the chimney has been my recent strategy. I would kind of hope that it eventually it would learn that it just gets yelled at every time it goes on the chimney. <laughs> the problem is I have three chimneys, so it'll just go to another fucking chimney. Like, that's the only one that's super close by, so whatever. Okay. 69.5, 69.5. All right. This is running the latest version on all of them. Um, some of the output's a little fucked up. And I don't... I don't think that's my fault. Um, I think, unfortunately, oh my god, these raisins, um, I think sometimes IPMI just fucks up serial output. Maybe my driver is fucked. Aren't you in the USA? Just shoot the verb. America. Solve all our problems with guns. Okay. Well, what do we have to do now? Uh, do something about the serial device global. We did. We just made it. We just documented why it's unsafe. Custom Eufy spec with single thread false. Do I need to do that? Basically, that breaks atomics. Am I going to use atomics? I already do use atomics, but I'm not using them for atomicity yet. Um. Hmm. Get memory map and exit boot services. Oh yeah, I gotta have my phone ready. I might get a, I think I got a delivery today. Um. Okay. Okay, we good. Um, yeah, this is good. This is good. And then at this point we can allocate. So, I don't actually know how I boot ARM cores. 
Um, let's look for an ACPI spec. It should be recent enough. Uh, actually, EFI spec. For some reason, the Yuffie spec has the ACPI thing. <laughs> there we go. January 2019, ACPI. Um, any good resources for learning OSDEV? There's the OSDEV wiki, which is uh, an okay way of learning, but uh, I don't know. It's okay. All right, so we parse out the MADT. MADT from address. Um so I'm curious if the MADT has information about GIC CPU interface. The required have a processor device. How am I supposed to bring up processors on this system? Like, how do you launch cores? Uh, Cortex... A72 Um <sighs> ARM64 uh multiprocessor spec EBBR. EBBR defines requirements on platforms and operating systems. Written as response of lack of boot sequence. Um, be agnostic, focus on the Yuffie interface, not the code base. Okay. Hmm. Configuration tables, secure boot, runtime services, runtime device mappings. There we go. Multiprocessor startup protocol. Um. PS. This power state coordination interface. Uh, 
Is this what I want to do? Us. PSCI. Come on, ARM. Come on, ARM website. You got this. You got this, ARM. Implemented by ARM Trusted Software. Gross. Wow. Nice. Okay, let's just see what Linux has to say about it. CPU on off. KVM. <sighs> On architectures that support it. PSCI may be required for SMP to bring up more than one CPU. Linux kernel documentation, okay. Firmware implementing the PSCI, okay, it's timing out, refresh. Um, functions are invoked by trapping to the privilege level of the PSCI firmware and passing arguments in a manner similar to that of AAPCS. Okay, function ID and then parameters. It's like a custom calling convention. Function ID for CPU suspend, CPU off, CPU on, migrate. So are these the functions? It'd be cool if the spec load. This might be actually really easy. I might literally just trap in and launch some more cores. I guess I don't know where they would start execution. I guess at the reset vector. And I don't know if those cores need to go through uh, firmware initialization or not. Oh, this is a non-static page. Oh. 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 Click download to view. Download. Okay. Oh, we did it. How long is this spec? Okay, not super long. Intended use functions. CPU on. <laughs> it's intended uh, for dynamic addition of cores for use in secondary boot, hot plug, or big little. Before CPU on, it must be implemented async. Entry point needs to be physical from the point of view of the caller. Context identifier is meaningful only to the caller. Okay. Why 
one OS entry address and context ID. I see. Oh, is is one the CPU number? Context ID. With context ID and X0, R0. Oh, sweet! So you literally just say, go execute this address, pass in this and X0. Oh, that's nice. I'm guessing one. Hey, that ain't bad. I don't know how I know how many cores I have. How does it work in x86-64? I boot the cores into real mode. <laughs> it's actually fucking disgusting. Um, it's terrible. It's so bad. It's so fucking bad. <laughs> x64 is garbage, dude. It's so bad. Um... Doesn't look too bad to be honest, but we're writing uh, we're writing an operating system mainly for x86. So I think we're just gonna ignore this shit. We don't really care. Um, so we could either start working on setting up page tables, um, or we could get the APs booted up. Um, and if we get the APs booted up, we're basically gonna have to allocate some low memory. We have to allocate memory in the low, in the first, what, um, one meg, I think? So you have to allocate something in the first one meg. Um... And that kind of sucks. Does it? Does it suck? I don't think it does suck. Um, mute. Mm dot allocate. Shared ring set. Source lib. There we go. Oh. The allocation will come from whatever is next best. Um, ah, damn, dude. How do I want to do this assembly? I don't think Yuffie. Uh, of course. I don't think Yuffie gives me any mechanism to boot other cores. I think I have to bring them up. Can you make fonts look good like Mac OS? No, it's impossible. It's too good. It's too good. I have to init sippy sippy, don't I? Uh, 
Hmm. Well, uh, fuck. <laughs> um. Vim kernel source apic Is this code good? Hmm. Um. Um. Do you have a business email I can reach? I do, but I'm not really looking for business right now, to be honest. Got an inquiry I think you'd be interested in. Um, you can find my email on my blog. I've got a contact email on my blog. Um, I've got a I've got a pretty high barrier for interesting work. I'm also not cheap. <laughs> I'm also not cheap. It would take it would take a lot to get me to do something. So basically I need to get CPU features. I need to detect if I want to use X2 APIC. Um I need to enable the APIC. So there's there's kind of a bunch of things, but I get CPU features this is kind of exactly what I have to do. Enable and normalize the APIC base. Load the previous base. APIC base. Or on the APIC base we want to use. I don't need to do that.
You're a composer for not taking deals. Um, okay, so I think get CPU features is good. Yeah, this is pretty good. I don't want to write this code again. That's that's for fucking sure. Um All right, uh, we're gonna start working on a uh, arc. Um, cargo new lib arc. There is a core arc, but. X save. There's a CPU ID that I can do. Has CPU ID. Ah. Get CPU ID max. So it doesn't look like there's anything for reading and writing MSRs. And I don't see anything for is x86 feature detected. I don't think that exists though. Oops. Yeah, I don't think that macro exists in core. Um, or is that due to arc? That might be due to arc. Okay. Couldn't find that feature. Where does that come from? That is in standard. Yeah. Okay. So that's in standard. Um... CD six. So I can do a CPU ID, but I can't do read write MSRs and stuff like that. So I think we do need to make an arc. SP shared arc source lib 
Uh, no standard. I wonder if not documenting a module. Yeah, missing documentation. Nice. Nice. I'm actually really happy about that. Uh, this is um, architecture specific um, helper functions. Uh, mainly for interacting directly, uh, interacting directly with the CPU. Okay. Um, source ACPI x86 arm. Eric. Uh, no, that is in, uh, shared generic access. X86, okay. Pub mod X86-64. ARC-64, ARC-64. Sweet. E shared arc source x86.64.rs. Um, and then this is uh, x86.64 um, architecture. Uh, uh, x86.64 architecture uh, uh, helper functions. <laughs> There we go. This should build through that and then fail on that. Perfect. Shared arc source arc64.rs. Arc64. Done. Okay, this should build all the way through now. Good. Okay. All right, so what we want to do is steal. I think this is a good place to start. Nice. CPU ID. Um, okay. CPU ID. Pub unsafe FN CPU ID leaf. Um, sub leaf. So this is CPU ID under count. Get CPU ID max. Gets the highest supported leaf and subleaf. Uh, use core arc x six sixty four. Get CPU ID max. Okay, max CPU ID. Max extended CPU ID. And are those the only ones that we do? I kind of just want to directly do CPU ID. Dot zero, and I'm guessing those are EX, EBX, ECX, EDX. Okay, sweet, sweet. CPU ID counts. C 
CPU ID count. CPU ID count. Sweet fireplace, thank you. Um, max CPU ID. And dot zero will be X. And the CPU ID results uh, looks like just dot X. Okay. So, CPU ID count. CPU ID count. CPU ID count. S dot three and replace dot three with a dot EDX and twos are ECX Uh, ones are EBX. That's probably like close to building, to be honest. Max CPU. Okay, I think we're good. Um, okay, I don't like that. We'll tell Clippy to shut up about that. Allow this. Okay. Uh, good. Good, 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 good. All right. Um, wiki CPID. So, zero, zero, and then EAX is the highest basic parameter. And that's good. We got the processor string, and we don't really care about that. Actually, do I have the processor string stuff in here? Because that stuff's actually really cool. No. Ah, uh, we can just write it. Okay, um, returns, uh, CPU features, uh, which identifies different, uh, x86 CPU features, uh, supported by the current processor. Okay. So I guess EDX and ECX, yeah, EDX and ECX, we want those. Um, and then power and thermal, don't care about that. Extended features, seven, yup. Wow, and this is a lot. Turns extended feature flags. Returns maximum ECX value for EAX is seven in EAX. Okay. So you get the max CPU ID, and we're going through these. 
If it's greater than or equal to seven, then we do this. Greater than or equal to one. Greater than or equal to 8,001. Um, I guess... It's all manual. I want the official Intel reference for this, I guess. Hopefully the instruction set reference is the correct one for this. CPU ID. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Maximum input value for basic CPU ID information, and that's what we get, max CPU ID. Okay. Bank. Uh, stepping, cache information, serial number, cache shit, we don't care about that. Uh, feature information. Okay, so feature information is in ECX and EDX. See figure 3.7 and table 3.10. Okay. All right. Okay. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 4, 5. Okay, all the way through. All right, uh, we're just gonna re-implement this. This should, um, okay. X. Boom. All right. Zero zero EAX maximum input value for basic CPU ID. If it's greater than or equal to one, that has the feature information in. ECX and EDX. So what we're gonna do is features. This starts off with ECX. Um, okay. CPU ID is equal to this. And I'm gonna say Um, mm. macro rules set a uh, check feature. Bit um, field ident features field. Can I do this? Let's just say true for now. Check feature max CPU ID zero. Getting close to 1k GitHub followers? That's fucking crazy. Okay, this does work. This is equal to um, values and expert. A 
So, I might do this. And then we just override it. And then that allows us to do CPU ID dot um, reg is equal to this. And then this is equal to, what am I fucking doing? Um, so you have the CPU ID dot reg and uh, shift by bit if this is equal to one. Oh, and one. Okay. The feature is detected if the bit is set at that position. So we shift it over so it's in the bottom slot and it off and then check if it's equal to one. And if it is, then the feature is there. So now we can update TPID and we can say, we're going to check for, um, we're going to check for SSE3. Uh, I guess this is an EDX. And I'm going to do this. Bit 0 of EDX is SSE3. Ah? Uh ah? -huh. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh? I guess we can rescope. And this is a CPID result. Oops. Ample default? No. Okay. So we'll just do this. Um, uh, just getting uh, CPID in scope. Actually, can I do this? Yes. Okay. Um, the CPID variable for results such that uh, we can make a macro that uses this value. All right, check feature, and doesn't have to be mute yet, but it will eventually become mute, but not a big deal. Uh, check SSE3, and now we just brrrp. Yeah. Bit one. Uh, P C L M O L Q D Q, and I guess uh, D test sixty four. Now we do data entry. Unless I can parse this table in a better way, but I don't think I can. Monitor. DSCPL VMX SMX East TM2 SSSE3 um, C next ID Oh, this is going to be really boring, chat. Entertain me. Entertain me, chat. FMA, fuse multiply add. Uh, compare exchange 16B.
XTPR updates control. P DCM. Reserved. PSID DCA. SSC four one, SSC four two, X two A pick the thing we actually care about, move big Indian, population counts, TSC deadline, AS new instructions, X save OSX save. AVX F sixteen C already ran and not used. Okay, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, 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 three, three. Uh, 22, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1. 32 things here? Sweet. Reserved, unused. We did it, chat. We did it. Uh, it's okay. We're only like a, a fifth of the way done. Ha <laughs> S check uh, dot star check feature bang dot star uh, E A through D X comma Uh, space zero through uh, one or more white spaces. Um, uh, one or more digits followed by a comma and a space, and then uh, I guess we want a group of things until that. And then one, two, three, four, pub, space, one, colon, bool, comma, G. <laughs> Art. Art.
Okay. Doop, doop. Just copying and pasting from a PDF. PC IDE. Oh, these ones are easy. These ones are easy. I gotta work on my mouse aim. Okay, okay. All right. some quality code or is that some quality code Whew. thank goodness Bink. Okay, SP, uh, e cargo, serial arc G. Woo! Sorry, I, I take the woo back. <laughs> There we go. We did it. Okay. Uh, okay, so on actual ARM hardware, that won't do shit. And then if I run this in Kimu... Oh, this won't work, because Kimu doesn't support serial. Uh, so we'll just re reboot one of these devices. Oh, fuck it. We'll reboot both of these computers. All right, and then these will come through, and it will work, and it'll be great, and everything will be fantastic. Oh, my God. Woodpecker 991. God damn it, Woodpecker! <laughs> Didn't we get rid of you? If you don't get the reference, I had a Woodpecker making noise earlier today. <laughs> Do you use a tiling window manager because of aesthetics? Yeah, because it's fucking amazing, dude. It's so nice because I can just I can just do stuff like this. That's great. So nice. It's so nice. Um. Well, uh, we'll just keep going. <laughs> we're just we're just gonna keep going. Oh no! Did I fuck that up already? Yeah, these are all in the ECX register. Whoops! <laughs> oh, and he's booted. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, uh, we'll reboot those machines. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, CPID counts. This is uh, feature information and input EAX1. 
and then ECX contains this shit. So this is an ECX, and then the next one is EDX. Okay, and then we have two gaps in here. We have a 31 gap, and we have a 16 gap. Okay, this should now be at 32, and it is. Great, EDX. All right. All right, now we just do the same thing again. Woohoo! FPU, VME, DE, PSE, TSC, MSR, PAE, MCE, CX8. Oh, isn't this so fun, chat? APIC, reserved. Uh, SEP, MTRR. Um, PGE, MCA. Uh, conditional move. Page attribute table. PSE, 36. PSN. Cash line flush. Which apparently they say CLFSH. Okay. Another reserved. Debug store. ACPI. MMX, FXSR, SSE, SSE2, self snoop, hyper threading, thermal monitor, reserved. PBE, pending break enable. Oh, that's, uh, that's one I don't actually know. Um. Okay. Here we go. Bink, bink, bink. Have you tried the M1 chip? I have not. You think I can afford Mac hardware? What do I look like? Shit's expensive. Um, someone probably knows. There, is there a way to have everything reformatted for me? When I do these, like, multi-line things? How do I tell Vim to, like, basically retype it in and, like, re-indent it and stuff? There's a way, isn't there? So I'm trying to cut down on how long this takes, because the last one sucked. MTRRs, PGEs. Cargo format, ah, uh, no, no. Thirty six bit page size. Those are some big pages. You would never need more than thirty six bits. That'll cover all your RAM. What's that? 36, 15. What's that? 15 times 4 gigs? 
Literally no memory. Or 16, 16 times 4 gigs. 64 gigs. 36 bits. There we go. That's what I like to do. When I'm copying, pasting code brainlessly, I like to keep my brain occupied by doing uh, base 2 mathematical operations in my head. Really, really fun. Nice definition of fun. All right, so uh, we're going to try it. Um, GW? Mm. Mm. No, not quite. Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to do this manually. Oh boy, I, lo I lost my feeling. There we go. Son of a bitch. Really? Why did it do that? Some of those got fucked. What's going on here? Oh boy. Oh boy. Vim. What the fuck are you doing? Oh, uh, was one of those fucked up? Bam. Two seventy seven. See this. Okay, and then we just had, uh, we just want to escape. One of these uses uh, 277 in this ballpark. Escape those. Easy. Okay, um, nice. Already ran, AVX. Look at all these features. No PC ID? Wow. Max CPU ID 22, 13. Yeah, these look good. These look good. SSE monitor. Yeah, no VMX support, no SMX support. And this is both. East TM2. SD bug falls. X pointer. Nice. Nice. What are you listening to on the headphones? Just kind of random stuff on Spotify. Nothing in particular. 
It's actually like a, a pretty random playlist. Although I am going to change it up because I'm bored of it. I'm really bored of it. I keep getting the same fucking songs over and over again. All right. Woodpecker ambient sounds. <laughs> okay. Tilby and Cash Info. I don't give a fuck. Uh Okay. So we parse out all of that feature information. Thermal and power management don't give a fuck. Extended features X X7 Table three eight. Okay, so for some reason they don't have a table for these ones. The fuck? Why not? Oh, there's a saw belief too? Oh god, dude. The features don't end. Might as well throw this all away and just go to risk five. Call it a day. Yeah, this says like AVX VBMI user mode instruction prevention. VAES, vector neural net instructions. Oh, five level paging is in here. 57 bit linear addresses and five level paging. Oh my God, we're gonna get 57 bit address spaces? Hell yeah. Finally, a usable address space. Fast short rep move. Hybrid, if the processor is identified as a hybrid part? Weird. Why 57? Because uh, it's 58 plus nine. <laughs> or 48 plus nine. That's why. <laughs> It's technically because 5 times 9 plus 12 is 57. That's why. <laughs> it's because each level of a page table adds 9 bits to your address, and there's a base of 12 bits. So adding one more level extends from 48 bits to 57. Nothing anymore. Okay, is there an extended table? No. Um. I like how they have a nice table for like one of the CPIDs, but the two other ones that return features, it's just like, nah, nah, fuck that. We'll just, we'll just do some long text formatting. I guess there's really not that much in the extended ones. It's just like... Oh, this is where AMD puts their stuff.
I see. Yeah, AMD puts all their shit in in this one and these ones. Huh. Did they not use this? EDX, PSE, FPU. Do I not care then about these? There's a couple things. LZ count, prefetch, syscall, sysret, execute, disable, one gig pages. Okay, there's some... There's some there's some sauce in here, but there's not much. There's not much in here. Uh, Hub Max extended CPID U32 extended CPID information. Extended. Woo. Woo. Thrilling. If max extended is greater than or equal to one, two, three, one. Check feature. So we're just doing Intel for now. ECX, zero, LAHF, SAHF. Um, ECX, five, lead zero count. Uh, eight, prefetch W. And that's it. Just three bits in there. Uh, and then EDX um, 11 is syscall sysret. Um, 20 is execute disable. We'll just say execute disable. I don't know. We could say NX. Uh, I think NX is what AMD calls it. Um, uh, Gbyte pages, gigabyte pages, 27 uh, is RDTSCP. Twenty nine, and this is uh, I guess I thirty two E. Uh, long mode. So syscall sysret, execute disable. We'll just say, we're going to say it's NX because that's what we all know it as. Uh, 26 is gbyte pages, gibbybyte pages, RDTSCP, and 29 is long mode. Okay, so this is everything that Intel supports. Yeah, one, two, three bits there, zero, five, and eight. 11, 20, 26, 27, 29. Okay. Um. All right. Easy, easy clap. <sighs> These literally don't have more description than that. I mean, it's the leading zero count instructions and the prefetch W instructions. 
It's just calling sys rats. Um, sick. CPID, CPID. Bam. Okay. Now we're booking it. Reboot both of those. Technically, we can reboot this. Not that it matters. Oh. Okay, so those are booting. Um, and then technically, processor brand string. We could parse out the processor brand string because that's really fun to be, to be honest. That's a really fun thing to parse out. Address translation information. Yeah, so we just have a bunch of features at EAX, uh, yeah, EAX7 that we technically don't support right now. Are these done? Okay, yeah. So gigabyte pages, RDTSCP, long mode, NX, it's called Sysret. Yeah, and that's true. We basically support all these features. Nice, nice. Does this have AS and NI? It should, this should. Yeah, this just doesn't have virtualization, but other than that, it supports actually a lot of stuff. No OS X save, kind of interesting. I guess, RD Rand, yeah. Oh, this has RD Rand, I didn't know that. I mean, I probably did. I probably used RD Rand on this at some point. Seal flush, I would fucking hope so. Uh, and then hyper-threading. Good. Good, 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 good. All right. Um... God, there's a lot of feature bits in this next one. It's like everything is filled up. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Fuck! <laughs> Son of a bitch! Max CPU ID greater than equal to 7. CPU ID 7. Well, here we go! Yoink! These ones start in EBX. We're almost done with this shit. Holy shit. God, this is so much code, dude. Ah, oh, I hate it. It's okay, it doesn't actually generate that much code. <laughs> S, E, C, X, E, B, X, G. Uh, we need a 16 and we need a 31. Okay. All right, FSGS base. 
IA32 TSC adjust SGX BMI1 uh, HLE AVX2 yeah so there is like interesting stuff in here that we need FDP EXCPTN only SMEP uh, BMI2 enhanced rep Um, invalidate PCID, read the manual, RDTM, this is deprecates, okay, weird, um, MPX, RDTA, AVX 512F, AVX 512 D word and quad word, RDC, ADX SMAP, AVX 512 IFMA, reserved, CL flush optional, CLWB, uh, PT, processor trace. Is there another PT? No. Sweet. Okay. Um, PT, AVX 512PF, AVX 512ER, uh, AVX 512 conflict detection, uh, Shaw instructions, AVX 512 byte and word, AVX. 512. Okay. Okay. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, uh, we just do this for ECX. <laughs> Woo! Thrilling! Okay. Prefetch WT1. AVX512 VBMI. Actually, those instructions are sick. Uh, UMIP, PKU, OSPKE, weight package, AVX512 VBMI2, CTSS. Uh, GFNI, VAS. Okay, uh, vector packs, uh, CL mole QDQ. Uh, AVX512 VNNI. Hey, neural net instructions. AVX512 bit elg. Not used. AVX 512 V pop count double word and quad words reserved. LA 57, that's the 57 bit five level paging. Bits 21 through 17, the value of MAWAU used by bound LDX and bound STX instructions. New piece of shit. You piece of shit. 17 to 21. Okay. 22. Read PID. Key locator. Reserved. CL demote. Cash line demote. Interesting. I actually don't know what that does. Uh, move. Diri. Move dir 64B SGXLC and PKS. All right. Wow, they really started using some weird bits, man.
They really started doing some weird shit in here. Okay. Um. Those ones are good. When you make a macro check feature where you just add all those things together, uh, I think this is a, a little bit cleaner. Because you can actually change the numbers easily. EBX, S, EBX, EDX, G. Um, okay, this one just starts at bit one, apparently. Bit two, AVX 512 for the NNIW. AVX 512 for FMA PS. Uh, fast, short, rep move. Reserved, reserved, reserved. AVX 512, VP2 intersect. Reserved, MD clear, ooh. Uh, reserved through 14, 15 hybrid. 16 through 19, CTIBT, through 25 reserved. Now we get the good ones. Um, IBRS, STIBP, Twenty-eight, LND flush. Um, arc capabilities and core capabilities. Bit thirty-one is SSBD. Okay, double checking. M A W A U. Just gonna ignore that. <laughs> uh. Do we call it Ret? Features. Features dot M A W A U is equal to CPU ID ECX shift by seventeen and OB one, two, three, four, five. That's those five bits. Oh, I still have underscores in some of these. Oh, oh my God. There we go. Uh, mow wow, wow, wow. Noise five thirty two. Um, 
I need to learn Ross to do some AVX 512 dedupe and variable checking stuff. Yeah. AVX 512 and Rust has gotten a lot better, luckily. It was pretty bad for a while. I actually have a lot of code I need to rewrite to use the new intrinsics. All right, this is the home stretch. We're on the home stretch, chat. Okay, uh, it, it literally just says these for these, I'm not cheesing it. We'll probably use SMAP. Be my two. Okay. A lot of these are pretty short, RTM. We're going through these pretty quickly. Eh, dude, fucking highlighting and PDFs is so bad. Q. I wonder if I'm gonna do processor trace in this OS. Actually, I think. Yeah, I might do some crazy stuff with processor trace. Actually. We're close. We're almost done with this. This is the home stretch, chat. We're almost fucking done. And then we can actually write code. This honestly wasn't too bad. I don't I don't know. Isn't isn't the worst thing I've ever done. GFNI, what's GFNI? Bag. Vector pop count. Bam. This technically at a period. Cache line demote. I want to try that. I don't know what that does, but that sounds really fun. Can you like punt a cache line to a higher cache? That'd be fucking nuts. I feel like I could do some crazy shit with that. I don't know what a hybrid part is, but that sounds advanced. OK. 
Okay. <laughs> These are all like the mitigation bits. Uh, STIVP, L1D flush. Two spaces after period. Yeah, I saw that. I didn't do that. Not my fucking fault. Oh boy. Oh my god, did we do it? Got a couple things we're gonna have to escape in here, but that's fine. Probably a couple more things we need to escape, but uh, pretty close. 548. Oh, yeah. 527 and 532. Bink, bink. Bink, bink. Woo! Clean. Okay. All right, so now we have all those things parsed out. All right, there you go, that's, uh, that's 730 lines of code in an hour. Not bad, not bad. Respectable. Not happy about it. Um, got the uh, maximum lengths. Um, or get the maximum uh, CPU ID nodes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Technically. 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 Um... Technically, there's one more bit. If CPU ID EAX maximum input value supported, uh, maximum input value for supported leaf seven sub leaves. If it's equal to one, then check feature in EAX bit five, AVX five twelve BF sixteen. Seven one. Because this is seven zero and this is seven one. If x is greater than or equal to one, then technically we have one more field. 
pub, AVX512, BF16, bull. There you go. Donzo. Okay, that is literally every feature out of the latest manual. L1D flush. Oh, nice. STIBP. Yeah, this doesn't have any of those. Fast short rep move. Aww. So I'll have a couple of these AVX 512s. Yeah, so I have like CD, which I don't think. Uh, yeah, these have like PF and ER, and these don't. Which is interesting, because this is a much newer processor. Uh, but this has like BW and VL, and this one doesn't. Um, pretty awesome. No cash demote? Which one? On the top one? Neither, yeah. I'm not too surprised, to be honest. Not too surprised. Okay. Okay. Yep, no BF on either of these. MD clear, yeah, CT, IBRS. M wow. Prefetch. Oh, it supports long mode, that's good. Oh, AVX512, the best. Processor trace, does this have processor trace? No way, yeah, it does not. No SHA instructions. I don't know of any silicon that has the SHA instructions yet. Maybe some like uber bleeding edge stuff. No LA57. Yeah, neither of them will have it. I mean, this one definitely wouldn't have it. Nice. Okay. Well, now that we've done that, um, now we can basically initialize the Apex. Okay, so uh, what we want to do is get CPU features and make sure there's an A pick and get the base, I guess. Um, once we have the base of the A pick, we require that the A pick is globally enabled and we get execution. Re enabling a globally disabled A pick is not always supported per microarchitecture, thus, BIOS should never globally disabled. Okay. Um, or on the APIC base, enable it unconditionally. Yep, that's fine. Check if that, enable the X2 APIC if it's supported. Okay, and then the pick state, we can disable the pick. Yeah, I guess we can start disabling interrupts and everything and do all that shit. The classics. Um. Yeah, I guess we need a uh, read MSR. Okay. Nice. Nice job, chat. Good job on all that. Pub uh, unsafe FN read MSR. Uh, MSR U32 yields a U30 U64. Um, reads the uh, MSR. Okay, parameters, uh, the, uh, this is a uh, star MSR, the model specific register to read, returns um, the value of the uh, MSR. Pretty descriptive, uh, asm rdmsr, we're gonna have uh, input into uh, it's gonna be into, I think, ECX. And this will be the MSR. And then we have an 
uh, I guess we could say a late out, not that it matters. Uh, a late out into EDX, um, which will go into high. Be high, uh, high, low. I think this syntax, you can do this, right? I think that's a thing that you can do. Okay. Um, high as U64, shift 32, or low as U64. Um, late out, eeks, low, high. Feature as um, yep. Put in a couple more parens. Oh. Um, SP shared arc source lib. Woo! Um, and then I guess options, no mem, no stack. Intel RDMSR. I don't think it affects flags, does it? No flags affected, so, uh, uh rough dasm. Options. Options, uh, no mem, no stack, preserves flags. Good. Writes val to the MSR, val. the value to write to the MSR, value 64, wormser in um this is val shift 32 As you thirty two Okay. Not what I wanted, but we'll make it work. Um in X shift zero as you thirty two. I don't know if I need more parens. Really? First try? Um, safety, this directly, uh, reads from model specific registers, which can, uh, um, cause exceptions, um, if the, uh, MSR address is invalid. Okay. This directly writes. Uh, or cause other undefined behavior by changing the state of the processor. Clean! Clean! 
All right. Thank you. Um, okay. All right. Uh, we can mark these in line too. They're literally single instructions, so those should definitely get promoted to inline. Nice. Nice. Okay, so now, mm. No warnings, no errors. Beautiful. Um, wrong op. I probably didn't update it, did I? Thank you. That, that would have been a pretty big issue. EDX Val shift 32 is U32. Shift 0 is U32. Okay. Okay, well, we would have caught that pretty fast, I think. Um, <laughs> now, what we want to do is basically implement the APIC stuff. We're going to do that inline uh, temporarily. Uh, const APIC base extended global enable bits. Bam. Okay. Let features is equal to this. Assert features dot apic. Uh, apic must be supported. Um, yeah, literally check. If the APIC is supported, um, okay, get the CP features, uh, make sure that the APIC is supported. And we'll move this to another module once it works. We're just pocking it out here. Then we're going to uh, load the uh, APIC base register. Let APIC base is equal to CPU. Uh, arc x664 read msr i32 apic base. Uh, we're gonna assert that apic base and enable is not equal to zero. Um, apic was disabled during uh, firmware execution. Here we can say uh, we cannot always re enable the. Apic, thus uh, make sure it was not disabled by the firmware. Beautiful. Okay. Now. Um, what? Apic base is equal to apic base and ox f f f f f f o i don't know if that's 100% correct um Let apic base is equal to apic base or enable. I guess we know it's already enabled. We got the base. Um, apic base MSR. So that's to extract the actual base address of the apic. 
Um, enable the X2 APIC if supported. Uh, if CPU, if features X2 APIC features. Um, APIC base MSR or equals I32 APIC base extended. Okay, write MSR, uh, arc x 64 write MSR to the i32 APIC base and APIC base MSR. Um, reprogram the APIC as some settings may have changed. Okay. APIC base at X, APIC base. I mean, technically we don't need to be doing APIC stuff yet. Uh, we can, whatever. Um, so uh, let's try it on the hardware quick. And then I'm gonna look up the Intel manual for uh, system development, system programming guide, there we go. Okay, and then what I want to do is look up the APIC, which is um, is that after the VM stuff. APIC virtualization. APIC, there it is. Okay, APIC. Local APIC, all the addresses and shit. BSP flag. Um. BSP APIC global enable is bit eleven. APIC base field bits 12 through 35. Uh, yep, that's 12 and 32, 33, 34, 35. Okay, that's actually correct. Let's get the base address where the APIC is mapped. And then if we have X2 APIC support, then enable the X2 APIC and write that out. Um... Yeah, X2 APIC, same base address range, and it just sets that uh, one extra bit, which is bit 10. Yep, bit 10 for the extended. Okay. Fantastic. So fee and fee, standard base address for the APIC, hasn't been relocated by the BIOS. No big surprise there. Um, and now what we can do is... Um, If we have X2 APIC, so now we have to write accessors, I guess. Um, read APIC. Oops, sorry. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is move this into a module now. SP source apic.rs. And this will probably go into a library after we're done with moving it into this module, but whatever. Not a big deal. Um, struct apic, uh, mode, apic mode, enum apic mode, apic x2 
to a pick. Um, use the old memory mapped APIC mode, and then this is, uh, use the new, um, MSR based X2 APIC. Okay, uh, different modes for, uh, APIC operation. Uh, mod APIC. And this is the uh, mode the APIC has been configured to use. This is uh, the uh, APIC for the, uh, uh, an APIC, I don't know, like uh, an APIC instance, a local APIC, a local APIC instance, uh, impl, a pick fn uh unsafe fn init pub unsafe fn init returns a self uh initializes the uh local a pick for the current core uh returns um the uh initialized uh, Apex structure. That's one too many. Okay. Okay. And then this just returns Apex. Uh, mode is, um, if features x2 apic, then apic mode x2 apic, else apic mode uh, apic. Pretty aggro, but uh, it works. Okay, and then we can say uh, memory base. Um, and this is the APIC base. Uh, memory base and U64. This is the base address uh, for the APIC. Zapic. Features. Missing documentation? Yes. Uh, this is um, Intel uh, x86 APIC um, implementation. Okay, uh, constant never used is because we never actually call apic. So, um, say configure then we'll do apic apic init let apic is equal to this print A pick drive debug uh, pub struct called unsafe. Okay. All right, and then we'll reboot those machines. Cool, and we'll see what mode this come up. In beer right back.
Okay, um... X2A pick? Yeah, they're both in X2A pick mode. Fantastic. That's exactly what I would expect. Um, okay. So then we want to basically write to the X2A pick. Uh, or more specifically, we want to implement some uh, write routines on this. Um, pub unsafe fn write self. Um, I guess we'll just do this. Uh, write a value to an APIC register. And then uh, parameters register uh, the APIC register to write to. Okay. And then I already had these. I know that these are good. I'll paste these in here. Uh, we don't care about the ISRs. The LVT is actually interesting. Uh, we're not going to use any of these. We just want the APIC ID. Uh, actually, we want some... I want the ICR. Oh yeah, and for the ICR, that's uh, that's a special case. Okay, so I have APIC register. Um, this is gonna be read a value from an APIC register. The APIC register to read from and then these are should be u32 uh returns the uh 32-bit uh, value uh stored in the apic register and then And just copy paste this code pretty much self dot mode. Oh, honestly, yeah, I can do that. Apic mode. Um, uh, okay. Yeah, this is better. This is better. Because I don't think I need the base in these other modes. So in the X A pick mode, we have the A pick base. Beautiful. Okay. Then I literally called it A pick mode in the other one. I love it. Love it. Uh, and then this is arc x eighty six sixty four read MSR. Um, I say X A pick in this version. Yeah, so basically mapping. Oh, is that sliced already? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, okay. So we'll do, uh, we're already on safe. This as mute u32. This is a mutable a static mute. It, li it lives forever, so that's fine. Uh, core mem, or just core slice from raw parts mutable. This, 4096 divided by size of a U32. Uh, because the APIC is a, it's a full page. Page is 4,096 bytes. So that is why we say 4,096 divided by a U32, and then we'll do use standard a core mem size of. Nice, 81.
Nice. Okay, and this is not right. This is read. Uh, take a reference. Uh, take a register. Convert that register to the MMIO offset. Depending on the mode, we either take that offset and divide it by four, because that is a byte offset. So we divide that by four to get the correct index to read uh, from that mapping. Or um, we divide that offset by 16 to get the MSR index. This is just the way that you do X to APIC. X to APIC, you use MSRs. They're based at 800 hex, and then they just go up by one for every... Um, uh, they go up by one for each of the like APIC registers. Because the APIC registers in memory are spaced every 16 uh, bytes. So this divides it by 16, computes the actual offset, and then reads that MSR and returns the U32 value. So what this means is we can now... Um, we can add a get apic ID of the running core. Um, so that will read apic. Let's say read, read the apic ID, and depending on the mode, if it's x apic mode, then uh, it's the top eight bits, and if it's x two apic, then it's the whole register. That's just just the way it's done. Once again, so um, nice. Uh, returns the uh, APIC ID for the current processor. It's, pre it's pretty clean. I technically don't need that syntax, but whatever. All right. So now what I can do is I can print APIC dot APIC ID, and this will give me the APIC ID for the core that I'm running on, which would probably be zero doesn't have to be zero, but it is very likely that it is zero. And that looks pretty good. Now, what we can do is while that's rebooting, uh, we can implement this write ICR. Um, OK, uh, SIPI. Where do I do that? So I shared uh, kernel source sippy IPI. Okay, I want to do an IPI, and that does a write ICR. Okay, sweet. All right. Uh, destination APIC ID, IPI, X2 APIC, that's going to convert it. Then we construct the IPI command and send it by doing a write ICR. Uh, X APIC. This is probably pretty much already there. Arc XA664, write MSR 830. Um, in this situation, I'm actually okay dropping that. Okay, so um, write ICI, write ICR, okay. And then this is uh, parameters. This um, star dest apic id the uh, destination apic id to send an IPI to. Uh, then we have an IPI. This is um, the interprocessor interrupt to send. Okay, and then here parameters. Uh, Val, the value to write to the uh, ICR interrupt control register, I think. 
basically in uh, X2 APIC, you actually just do one right MSR because it's a 64-bit MSR. But for the X APIC mode, the like legacy mode, you actually need to do two writes. You need to latch in the high part and then write the low part. And that's why we have like a little helper function around that. And then IPI just builds around that and converts the destination APIC ID and then ORs in the IPI. Uh, and that's actually going to uh, send that IPI to another processor. So basically, we're sending an interrupt to another processor. And there we go. We have the uh, APIC IDs for those other ones. So now we're literally at a point where we can just go for uh, processor in... Um, um, yep. This, this, this. For proc and ACPI, um, here we can do let. Now, technically, there's not always going to be a. Uh, we want source ACPI and MADT. Okay, so we're going to say. If let sum MADT is equal to ACPI.MADT dot as ref. Um, if we have multiple APICs on the system, then for each processor in the MADT dot struct MADT. Uh, here we'll do Impl MADT FN APIX yields a local APIC off of a self. And this can be pub. Um, get the uh, APIX uh, described by the MADT and then it returns. Uh, a slice of all of the local apex on the system. And then this is just self dot apex dot dot self dot num apex. Okay, and then this is get the x2 apex described by the MADT, local x2 apex. Local x2 apic and um, x2 apix. Okay, there we go. Um, pub fn. Okay, that looks good. Um, then I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the ACPI spec, uh, EFS spec. UFI spec, ACPI spec, and then we can look at the MADT. MADT, uh, and then a local APIC, the flags, if it is enabled, if it's ready for use. If it's clear and online capable set, system hardware supports enabling it during OS runtime. If it's clear and online capable is also clear, okay. If that bit is clear, system hardware enable the process during runtime. If this bit is clear and online capable bit is also clear, it's unusable. Processor is ready for use. Um, okay, that's local APIC flags. This is the bottom two bits. Local X2 APIC flags. Same as local APIC flags. Okay. So, um, what we can do is local X2 APIC. We read that, um, and then what we can do is 
We'll make some constants. Const. Uh, a pick enabled. U32. I think it's a U32. Yes. Uh, this is one. And this is two. This is a pick online capable. And this is the a pick. Um, is ready for use. And then this is the uh, APIC um, could be enabled during run time. Okay, so then what we'll do is we'll say if x2 APIC dot flags and this or this is not equal to zero, then we do this. Okay, so uh, check if this APIC can be enabled. So if either bit is set, same thing here. And they're the same flag constants. So I'll just say apic flags and that. Okay, so that's only going to put apics in the list if they have been described as usable. And then down here, we can go through each entry in apics for apic and apics. Uh, we can do apic, oh, this is a uh, remote apic. If Remote apic is equal uh, remote apic dot um, apic ID is equal to okay uh, local apic ID I will say lapic ID mainly because that's an abbreviation other people use as well apic dot apic ID prints uh, Local apic ID is blah, L apic ID. I think we're going to use hex for this as well. There's no reason not to. If the remote apic ID, if the L apic ID is equal to this, then continue. Um, skip over ourself and then print remote apic x. Uh, remote apic dot apic id okay um then this is uh x2 apix and we're gonna need to cast some things yep u32 here uh, as a u32 that's a u82 u32 so that one should be fine then private field on these just say, uh, just these. Honestly, the APIC IDs should be all that we need. Uh, X2 APIC ID. Uh, this will say remote X2 APIC, remote APIC. And then we can reboot those processors. Uh, MADT is a private type. Pub. Pub. Okay. Um... All right. Pretty good. And then we'll basically see, uh, well, these print, they should go through all of the APICs on the system. Um... And then we're pretty much ready to boot cores.
Nice. Nice. All the Apex. Uh, and we skipped over zero, which is great. It's important. We don't want to initialize ourselves. Uh, good. Now, what we can do is uh, Apic, which is the local Apic. And I guess we Ippy. We send an IPI to the uh, remote Apic, X2 Apic ID. And then the IPI that we're going to send is uh, 4500. That's a NIT. And then Sippy Sippy, 4608. Um. So that is going to boot other processors. APIC ID as a U32 here. Doesn't need to be mute, in my opinion. Um, 159. Oh, I guess this does need to be mute. Which then means this does need to be mute. Okay. And then we just set this to mute. Not a big deal, because it creates a new one. Okay. Um... Those will boot those processors, and they'll start executing at uh, this is the this is the address. So this is um, eight thousand hex, so the eighth page on the system. Um, now we don't know if that memory is available for use. To be honest, uh, I guess technically, if we print that info, I don't think we do anymore. Oh, we do. Uh, zero to okay, it's in that range is free. Um, we shouldn't. Shouldn't just be YOLOing and kind of looking at those values, but uh, you know, we are so fuck it. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna try to write to the serial port, I think. Uh, so we're gonna do we have NASM, okay. Um, vim shell code dot bit 60 uh, bit 16. We're gonna do a uh, move dx 3f8. I guess I don't actually know. We don't really know where the serial port is. Um, here's what we can do. Uh, we're gonna do org 8000, which is where we're starting execution. We're gonna do a lock increment of the D word present at eight. 1050 and then we'll do a uh, halt yeah. disable interrupts halt uh, loop and then jump loop okay it's trash um, but basically this will increment a D word value atomically at 8050, uh, disable interrupts, and then loop forever. Okay, nasm f bin, shellcode.asm, xxd, shellcode. Uh, let's just do this. Okay. Um. Now we want to write that onto the system, so we're gonna uh, write in the shell code. So just temporary, right? It's pretty hacky right now. Uh, we're gonna make sure that this is uh, known to be U8. So we're gonna strongly type that. And then we'll do uh, let dest is equal to core slice from raw parts mutable um 8000 as mute u8 i guess this is just 10 bytes desk copy from slice temp
Okay. That looks pretty good. And now we'll write that in. Uh, we'll actually do 4096 dot dot temp dot len. And then... I, I guess we can do that. Temp dot len here. And then we'll do uh, let mute val is equal to... Mm, 8050 as mute u32 uh, as a mutable pointer to an atomic u32 use uh, core atomic atomic u32 ordering as a pointer to an atomic u32 oh, sync Okay, and then um, let mute last is equal to zero. Loop forever. If val load ordering sequentially consistent is greater than last. Um, this it's pretty shitty but it's just a test if the temporary value exceeds the last then print temp and then temp uh, last is temp uh, cores uh, ap's launched Um, okay, uh, theoretically, this might work. <laughs> so we basically, we create some real mode code. That real mode code uh, is just this. So 16-bit lock increments, 80-50. Um, disable interrupts and then loop forever. Uh, 8050, we're gonna store. Um, okay, so we're gonna write that memory first. So we'll initialize it to zero. This doesn't need to be mutable, yeah. Okay, so initialize it to zero. Because we don't know what's in there, we're kind of just stealing some memory. We should technically check uh, and allocate this, and we'll do that at some later point here. But uh, last is zero. If temp is greater than last, then print temp. So the only way that this value can get incremented uh, is catastrophic memory corruption on the system, or the other cores came online. So... What are the odds this works? First try. Mmm. Mmm. That worked. 191. There's 192 core system. 255 into 256 core system. It fucking works. Done. So we launched all the other processors. Um. Nice. Nice. Yeah, 192 core system and a 256 core system. So this confirms that we have X2 APIC working. I mean, this is using X2 APIC as well. Um, yeah, that's just working. <laughs> All right. Nice. I think that is where we're going to end the stream. It's pretty good. Uh, so we got this. All we really have to do now is we just have to allocate a stack for these cores. Uh, and then, yeah, allocate a stack for the cores, bring them on, like, in lockstep, and pass that stack information to the cores. Um, I, we're probably an hour away from basically having all of the cores booted into Rust and having a, uh, a multi, multi-processing OS. So, that's pretty good. Um, so let's find someone to raid. 
Let's see. Let's see. Um. Um, God, shit, there's actually, like, a bunch of people that are good here. What's this? Hmm... Hmm. All right, we're going to we're going to send you to someone who is a rust noob apparently. Uh <laughs> I think that's going to be that's going to be the plan. All right, we're going to raid this guy here. Here you go. See y'all later.